What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we're talking about the Office 365 Outlook Connector and Power Automate. What we're looking at today is an action called Get Event V3. This action allows you to get some information about an event in a specific calendar. So let's take a look at it. So I'm in Power Automate here. I have a flow which is my Office 365 Outlook Connector flow. And I've got a trigger, which is when an event is added, updated, or deleted. I can click on New Step, and then I can search Office 365, launched Office, uh, and we can find uh, the action, which is Get Event V3. Here we go, this one. So we have two parameters we have to fill in. It's the calendar ID and the item ID. So we can actually use the calendar ID from the uh, trigger or from another place. So say you're using a different action, you could do it from there. In this instance, I know it's going to be from my calendar, so I'm just going to specify it in there. Specify it in there. And for item ID, I'm going to use piece of dynamic content and choose the ID from that trigger again. And let's test this out. So let's click on test and I'll perform trigger action. So there's no other parameters to fill in, it's just those two, and we'll see what we get out of it. So we'll do that. It's running, we'll flick over to my Outlook. So in my Outlook, I will create a new event, which is called Sweet Event. As you can see, there is a, a drop down here for me to choose which calendar it's in. I only have access to my one calendar from this point. I can change the time, I can add a description. This is a description, say something cool. Uh, and I can go in here, I can invite people, I can do other things, uh, or I can just hit save, which is what I'm going to do. Event created. Cool. Now, we'll go back to Power Automate, and we can see the flow run successfully. Great. Now, this action gives you a lot, a lot of outputs, so let's go through them. So, we've got, um, scroll to the top. So, we've got the subject names, that's the name of the event. We've got the start and the end time. We've got the body, which is HTML, and we can see it's HTML, so it says, is HTML true? If we didn't know that these were HTML tags, which uh, we do, or I do. Um, so we know this is in HTML, and we've got that right here. The response type, so organizer, well, that's because I'm the organizer of this event. This would be um, a recipient or optional attendee if this was an event that was sent to me. But this is an event that I've sent and therefore I'm the organizer and that's the response type. Uh, the response time is basically uh, gibberish, I think. Uh, I think this is just because I'm the organizer. There is no response time, but it still needs a value. That's fine. The ID of the event is great. Created on time and last modified on time. That's really cool that we've got those in there. We've got the organizer. We've got the time zone. This is really key when you are working with different time zones and uh, maybe working across the globe and you need to know what time zone a specific event is in it does tell you in this action now we have a link uh, a web link to it in here so we can do that we also have spaces here for our required our optional and our resource attendees we have a location if that's been specified in the email the importance is an all-day event false because we didn't specify that it'd be true if it was Recurrence, none. This is not a recurring event. It's not going to happen every week or every Tuesday or something like that. Is reminder on true? So that little pop-up that you get from Outlook to say, um, hey, your meeting's about to start in 15 minutes. Um, do you want that on? So it is, it is on here. It has a reminder set to true. We also have the show as. So because I'm attending it, it's saying I'm going to show as busy. That's what that means. And we also have the response requested equals true, which means that we're requesting a response from those attendees. So we get lots and lots and lots of detail from this action. So we can use these things in other places where we want to say, okay, um, if this event um, is a recurring event, then do something specific. So we could go down a, we could add a condition in here to say, right, check for reoccurrence. If reoccurrence equals none, then end the flow. Else, let's you know set up some details to then capture. Right, okay, this is a reoccurrence thing. It's going to be put into my calendar, um, you know, every every week or every two weeks. Maybe I want to do something like that. So in my business, we use our Outlook calendars for things like, you know, getting invites and things from uh, customers or sending emails to customers with, with invites, invites for events. 
but then we use a dynamic system to actually track our time. So I could use something like this to say, all right, okay, when an email comes in, and when I get an event in, I could check to see uh, whether there's a reoccurrence. If there's a reoccurrence, then I can specify some rules maybe to create some records inside of my dynamic system so that I can update my calendar with those entries so that my calendar in dynamics is always going to be reflective of my calendar in Outlook. Or I could do, you know, I could do any sort of number of things like this with this action. So that's what I would probably use this for. Um, you know, getting email, getting details of events and things like that. Um, you know, filtering them based on some of these criteria, that, some of these parameters that we're getting back. But as always, I want to know what you guys use this for. Do you use this at the moment? Do you not use this? What do you use it for? Let me know in the comments down below. If you thought this video was helpful uh, or useful, if you could like it and share it with your friends, that'd be much appreciated. If you've not already, hit the subscribe button and stay subscribed to my channel. And I'll see you next time.